What is going on everybody, Nazdarachi coming back at you again today for another Dragon Ball Legends video and today we're going to be doing something that tons of people have been asking me about which is going to be tier list coverage. I know it's been a while since I've made or covered any type of character rankings for this game and I'm going to lead in with that being my disclaimer for this video which is tier lists in this game because of the three verse three and color wheel nature of the game are definitely to be taken with a grain of salt because ranking individual characters when the game is balanced around again teams of three and color disadvantage situations is not always super effective. Now there are characters that you will see in the higher tiers of the game that just do naturally have better tools and better kits with better buffs, debuffs, etc., better damage dealing options. There are those characters that have just plain out better situations going on than characters that are lower on the tier list. But even still, generally then, characters that are at the very, very top can usually be contested very well by characters in lower tiers that are their color counter. So because of that, again, you do have to be, you know, just kind of wary when you're dealing with single unit tier lists in this game. However, with that having been said and covered, I'm still going to cover this because there is a lot of useful and relevant information that we can get based off of how characters are kind of placed and viewed by the community in this game. Now, leading again into the tier list, this is not one that I have personally assembled myself. So, if you see things on it that you disagree with, which is fine, everyone's got their own opinion, but just don't levy your judgments against me. I didn't make this tier list, but I do agree with most everything on it. When I see something that I think my opinion might differ from a little bit, I'll definitely point that information out for you guys. We're going to try and get through it in a reasonable amount of time, but usually these videos do take a little bit longer, you guys, just because there's a lot of characters in the game now. There's a lot of information to cover. So I will try and be brief with each and every character. You know, some of the lower tier ones we can kind of just breeze through as well. But lots of information to cover, you guys. Again, I do not have a companion team guide to go with this video, mostly for the interest of time, because there's so many characters to cover, and because I don't have my slides ready for that. So we'll probably separate relevant meta teams and team guides and stuff like that into like a separate video series for this stuff but the, the tier list here many people wanted it i could probably go and get like a montage of all the comments requesting like when's the next tier list video but that's about it you guys we're gonna cover rusmir slanax tier list for this game he is the gentleman that helped me create all of my own tier lists it's kind of like when i had questions and advice that i wanted about certain characters i kind of bounced that information off him so i do feel comfortable covering this information and as well, we have to give a shout out to Devil Takoyaki or Thon on Twitter, who took the uh, little bit more ugly tier list website graphic that Rusmir cooked up and made it prettier, like what you see in front of you here now. So this as well is, I believe, the same gentleman who made the game press tier list. So if you notice the similarity, that would be why right there. So again, huge shout out to Slanak uh, Rusmir for providing the tier list information for us to cover. And huge shout out again to Thon for creating the graphic. It helps me produce the video because I don't have to do quite as much back end work. So again, I, I really do appreciate that, y'all. So we're going to jump in here and again, try and cover these characters as quickly as we can, but still give, you know, decent amounts of relevant information. At the top of the tier list here, you'll see how Rusmir has labeled this the cheat tier, which is somewhat debatable. You know, I personally put it as the, the Dragon Ball Super tier, and there were a couple other characters in it as well, but the cheat tier, mainly I would assume because this LF Goku is not only kitted out the booty hole with heals, the last man on the team left alive buff situations, he's got a really good green card, he's got the transformation with the key restore, and he's got that insanely oppressive blue card with the counter on it that can be repeatedly used to just really, really delete and cause lots of damage to characters. Now, there are ways around it. However, in the hands of extremely skilled players who are just going to like backslide and kind of deal with your tap attacks and the bait that you try and throw at them, this character is just extremely dangerous here, you guys. Really, when it gets to that point, you really do just kind of have to try and bait him out into making a misstep 
and then you can combo and capitalize against the character. Now again, there are a lot of green characters that can cause problems for this LF Goku, like Buhan and the, the Golden Frieza, the new LF Super Saiyan 3 Goku, even the Super 17. So lots of good counter options for this Goku. However, his damage output, his kit is just so nice, so absurdly damaging that I can understand why Rusmir would kind of put him in a tier of his own. He's definitely one of the most powerful units, if not the most single powerful unit we've ever seen in the game to date. Moving on to Z tier, we have both the LF Vegito and the LF Gohan holding their top spots. We've seen this in many tier lists over the past few months. There hasn't really been anything to come challenge these two and dethrone them. LF Vegito, of course, has one of the most unique and powerful and great kits in the game. Great sources for damage buffing, for defense. His ultimate arts technique is amazing. He's got key restore on his main ability and on his blue card. Blue card does good damage also. Just very, very insanely powerful unit. And very similar to the LF Gohan and Goku, the one we just previously covered, he fits on an extremely high tier, high meta team. Like you have, I believe at the top, if I were to rank the teams in this game in a kind of general sense, which is honestly more important than ranking individual characters, I would put the Sun Family and Fusions teams at the top of the game. Right below them, I would probably put like Lineage of Evil, movies, Frieza Force type stuff, Below that, we'd have like God Key Regeneration, Yellow Yellow Blue situations, females, and then below that you'd have stuff like Future and Hybrids. Probably the Androids would be in that kind of second grouping down as well. Androids still a pretty good team also. So again, we'll save all the team stuff for another video, but some of these units are placed so high because of their relevance in very, very high tier teams. So you do have to keep that in mind that both the Vegito, the Gohan have extremely powerful kits. They are very well known, so again, I don't think I have to get into too much detail with them, but um, just there, there isn't really too many units that can contest them. This red Gohan here is also one of the only real threats that, that Hit has in the game in terms of a character that Hit can't always just outright kill. So there's a lot of value in him for that also there. So next up we have a newer Ultra Space Time banner transforming Super Saiyan 2 Gohan. He is this high in the list. I know why, because of his lock-in combined with his post lock-in main ability to get the blue card and because of his green card. He's just kitted around screwing people up so they cannot swap out and doing lots of oppressive damage. And again, throwing that green card in the mix to really, really mess people up also. Again, his relevance on the Son family team, which is a really, really high tier team, and his usefulness in combat just make him one of the best characters in your arsenal that you could possibly have at this point in the game. I really, really, really do like this Gohan, and I really hate fighting against him. If you don't weather out his lock-in with like a, a good time swap before he locks, or you know, keeping just a red unit on the field a lot so it, to discourage him from doing that lock-in, he can be a real pain in the butt to deal with. And again, really highly defensive early game, then transitions into an extremely proficient offensive unit after that transformation. Just makes him extremely useful, you guys. Good cover change mechanics, good tanking, good ability to survive early game rising rushes, which then translates into high damage later on in the game. Very, again, very potent unit, very effective. Next up here, we have Hit. Probably one of the best damage dealing units in the game, but extreme glass cannon, you guys. You have to play protect the hit when you're using him, but because of his just built into his kit crit damage buffs and card draw speed over time, those things just get better and better. There's no way to remove them. Just, there's not really anyone in the game that can contend with hit. Like once hit starts a combo, generally another character is is going to die and there's not really much you can do about it unless you have a really good swap in mechanic like bojax or like an instant transmission or just some way to swap in to prevent hit from killing someone again you can just kiss a character goodbye once ever he starts his combos now that's kind of how you want to play him you keep him on the sideline you start combo with another character 
Then you swap into hit where it's guaranteed that he's going to be dealing damage and that he can't be hit. You kind of maybe use his first vanish, a green card, deal as much damage as you can. And then as soon as it becomes a risk, you swap him out. So that's how you would properly play hit. And if you do that, it doesn't really even matter that he doesn't have very many viable teams in the game just because he just does so much damage. Just so, so much damage. It's very hard to deal with unless you can kill him quickly. Like lock him in, switch to red, get him out of your hair before it's a problem. That's the best strategy for dealing with hit. Next up, Buhan. I'm sure this will make like Reddit and a bunch of people happy because the last time I put out a tier list video because Regeneration was not really a relevant team at the time, he was placed much lower and that made people angry. It made people very angry that even Android 16 at the time was ranked like as high if not a little higher than Buhan. So those people again should be happy now. Buhan has really developed into his own light and he is one of the best characters in the game. Regeneration though again I still think is kind of an underdog team because they lack good defense, they lack good utility and really kind of screwy options like Gohan or Vegito's lock-in, really good cover change options. I mean Cell has got one, one one-time use one, but outside of that they really lack some more of the exploitable gimmicks that make some of the other teams better than Regeneration. So. Even despite that, he is an extremely high damage unit. He's got great ways of self-buffing. He's got a great defensive green card that can be comboed out of if you use it well. He's got a very, very high damage blue card. Really only thing that Buhan struggles with here is dealing with color disadvantage. Like He does not function well against purple units at all. But against characters like this LF cheat tier Goku, he can, in many cases, just straight up kill that Goku with one blue card if it connects and doesn't get countered. So with that being said, Buhan is an exceptionally good, very high damage character, but um, a little bit linear. You just want to really deal damage with him and, and kind of exploit his green cards, deal damage. There's not too much else to using Buhan. Next up, the yellow full power Frieza. Extremely good defensive unit, very, very good damage output on his yellow cards and his blue cards, especially after he's used his main ability. Extremely functional green card kind of counter mechanic as well. Good swap in cover defenses, and he's got the immortal endurance passive, which requires a little bit of planning to deal with, unless you have characters that nullify endurance. He is also relevant on Lineage of Evil and Frieza Force, which are very, very, very high tier teams, and he's always going to be a really good core defensive and damage dealing options for those teams for the foreseeable future. So, as well, he's yellow, which counters a lot of very powerful enemies like Bojack and Vegito and the new cooler even, although he does struggle to do a lot of damage to the new cooler. Except after you've main ability, use that blue card. That, that'll that deal some pretty good damage to the new cooler. But again, just Frieza here, exceptionally good unit, very, very powerful, and definitely a mainstay on your Lineage of Evil and Frieza Force teams. Next up, Purple Bojack has the best cover exchange mechanic in the entire game because it works against every single Arts card type in the game and work against ultimate arts, which can really, really screw up your enemy. Works against blue, green, yellow, and red. At the cost of dealing a little bit of damage to your teammate, it's totally worth it. Like, you'll have other characters in the game, like the green movies Broly, or the uh, purple Super Vegito, who can only cover change versus like red cards, uh, Super 13 as well. And then you'll have other characters like the Super 17, who can only cover change versus yellow cards. But Bojax, it'll work against everything. Again, including blues and ultimate arts techniques, which that in and of itself is a very, very functional tool that adds a lot of value to him. And then beyond that, his kit is extremely linear. Just kind of deal as much strike damage as you possibly can. His main ability will assist in that. And as well, his green card's got the blast armor on it. And so it'll increase the damage he deals as well. So again, really linear kit but mainly for his cover change, his really good offensive stats, his relevance on the movies team, the fact that he's purple, like purple is a very relevant color in this game. So all those things combined definitely give Bojack very high tier status, but it really is only functional on the movies team. It's a very powerful team, but it sucks. He doesn't really have too much team flexibility there. Next up, 
Golden Frieza, probably one of the first units that I would openly debate whether he still belongs in Z or potentially drop him down to S+. He's a very, very high damage dealing burst damage unit, but unfortunately, he's almost useless after all of his buffs expire and that burst window has kind of gone away. Still extremely relevant on both Lineage of Evil and Frieza Force teams. Well, you could say he's pretty much still core on both of those teams and a great bench for both of them. It's just you really have to make good use of him within that time window. Otherwise, he's pretty much useless. So, again... Very relevant right now, very good unit, very high damage, but extremely narrow kit. Just deal blast damage, deal super move damage, use the ultimate arts card, and then when time runs out for him, he's just a throwaway character that he'll function well on type advantage, but other than that, just kind of save him and throw him in front of a rising rush or an ultimate arts or something like that. But So still a little bit debatable on his placement there, but he definitely deserves very, very high tier status. Next up... The LF Super Saiyan 3 Goku, brand new. I actually do agree with his placement this high on the tier list because of the utility and options that his kit provides as well as his instant transmission cover save. Son family definitely needed some stuff like that. Like they had the older green Gohan, but this unit right here is superior in my opinion in almost every way. But as well, He's got a very, very high damage ultimate arts technique if you use it properly. Animation for his legendary finish is exceptionally long, but um, he's one of the units, you guys, but we kind of have to mention this, that not every unit is placed on the tier list because of their offensive value. Like, not every unit in the game is an offensive powerhouse, and there will be people that you will see out online, on social media, that will basically trash on a unit if it doesn't deal amazing amounts of damage. However, there are plenty of other features of characters' kits and their utility, their options, that give them a lot of value outside of dealing just raw damage, you guys. The Goku does not start off dealing the best damage in the game by far. Towards the end of the game, he will start to steamroll a lot better, but again, because of his cover change mechanics, because of the counter on his green card that can be semi-exploitable. Like, even if you don't chain it into the blue card, it's still a very, very good effect that it gives him. And just, he's, he's a very, very good unit, you guys. He's just capable of 1v3-ing in a lot of situations. However, he does not function well on color disadvantage at all. Against purple matchups, he will struggle. But outside of that, you guys, I think that you can do a lot of solid work with this Goku. Again, he's got great defenses, he's got that great instant transmission save to save, you know, you just save him off to the sidelines so that the enemy won't rising rush for the majority of the game, and then by the time you actually do end up bringing him out, his offenses are actually pretty good. But again, in the earlier parts of the game, before he's buffed up a little bit, you know, it's not super, super great. And on color disadvantage, he's not super great either. But outside of that, I think that he is a very exceptional unit. And I do agree with his very high placement on the tier list. Next up, we have the LF Goten. This is another character that I debatably think might, you know, knock down a tier to the S plus area. However, I talked to Rusmir and basically because of his synergy with the yellow Super Saiyan 2 Gohan and the blue LF Goku, Rusmir says he still earns a spot on Z. His kit is extremely linear, just do blast damage into ultimate arts technique. That's really all that his kit has to offer. He's also a very non-durable unit. He's a glass cannon, so you do have to be wary of that. But again, just for raw damage and the conjunction with the heal and the buffs he'll get from Ultimate uh, with having Gohan and Goku on the team together, mostly just Gohan in that sense, but I don't know. He just combos really well with a high tier team, but his kit is just so linear that for me, I would probably put him in, in S plus somewhere, but I can concede and understand Bruce Mayer placing him up here still. It's just, I don't know. I personally like running the yellow Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, the blue LF Goku, and the green LF Goku, and then I have the red Gohan and the Goten on flex whenever I really need them. That's how I run that team, so understandable. Just the Son team is stacked. They're such a stacked team. 
Next up here, dropping down to S+, we have the Transforming Gogeta. Still a very, very, very good unit. He's a core member of your Fusions team. He's got a really good ability to defend himself as well as heal a little bit. He's got a mini lock-in, good damage output, and just, again, high relevance on a very good team. Understandable while he's still holding lots of value. You kind of want to spec him with your equipment for defense, crit, and health, though, I would say, if you could. Um, you can throw blast damage on there as well, but you really kind of want to combine him with the red Vegito to have really, two really good high defense units. But his damage output is definitely going to be way better than the Vegito's, like for sure. There's, there's no question about that. Next up, Vegeta Family Movies Transforming Vegeta. He is another character very similar to Goten that is just very linear in terms of how you want to play him. It's just do as much strike damage as you can and use his blue card to delete other characters. He does have the blast armor on every single one of his red cards and his blue card which makes him really a pain in the butt to deal with. He's a very, very high damage dealing unit. His main drawback though is his Z ability is only for the Vegeta family really, and that team is definitely an underdog team. Like Vegeta family, not, not super valuable in terms of team setup right now. He does function on the movies team, which is probably like the best place to use him, or like a Saiyans team or a Trinity team with Bardock, Super Saiyan Bardock, but he doesn't have a Z ability that helps any of them out. It's really only for the Vegeta family. So that's his main drawback. However, due to the fact that he just does such an overwhelming amount of damage, and he's not super glassy, makes him an extremely valuable unit, you guys. Next up, new purple, Cooler. He places extremely high. Honestly, I think that Cooler might deserve to swap with Goten right here on this list and take the tail end of Z tier just because of how tanky he is. On paper, he's got the highest defensive stats out of any other unit in the game. Like, if you get him to four stars, his blast defense is over 100,000. If you get him to six stars, both of his defensive stats are over 100,000. And because of that, and his permanent 20% defensive buff that he gets, he's just he can absorb so much damage, you guys. He also has a built-in heal. He's got some really good offensive tools also. He combines extremely well with the red metal cooler with the blue final form cooler, the yellow full power Frieza, and the golden Frieza for your Lineage of Evil teams. Again, just, just really, really powerful unit, more so for his defensive qualities than offense and what he provides to the team as a whole. But I do agree that this cooler is a little bit better than the new Frieza. I do, I do agree about that, but I think he could be valued even maybe a little bit higher. I don't. It's a preliminary placement for him, you guys. He is brand new, so we'll have to see how things evolve and change a little bit. But I do know for sure that he's a very, very high value unit. Next up, Rebrianne. Don't really need to spend too much time covering her. She's your leader unit for your females slash Universe 2 squad. Very, very good defenses. Very, very good offenses. And features that lock-in, the 10-second lock-in that's just so dang good. The same one that Vegito and Gohan... The old green Bardock. Just anyone who has that lock-in unit immediately has a lot more value added to them. Because swapping and vanishing and swapping is one of your main tactics in this game. And that completely messes that whole scenario up. So, it's a very, very good option to have in your arsenal. Females team, not super, super high in the meta, you know, structure of things overall but they are completely usable and competitive. There's not really a problem with their team, but they could use Kefla, maybe turn them into Power 18, some other female units, flesh them out a little bit more. I'm sure we'll see that in time, you guys. Next up, the Super Saiyan God Blue Goku from the Anniversary Banner. Very, very good early game defensive unit that transitions into a really good offensive unit later in the game. Fits extremely well on God Key. He can be run on Son Family, but really shines on God Key. He's got the heal on his green card as well that restores key. It's very spammable. It's very good utility. Again, he's kind of like dual purpose unit. Defense early on, offense later in the game into a really good ultimate arts technique that will also restore his vanish there. So I do think, again, God Key, not top of the meta right now, but potentially when we see Vegito Blue, Rose, Fuse Zamasu, stuff like that. 
we'll see that team kind of rise up even a little bit more. I don't think that team's going anywhere, you guys. It's just going to get better over time. But it's still pretty relevant right now, and he's a really good staple core member on it. I do, however, think in the future, you guys, that there is going to be the option to have a good guy and a villain version of the God Key team. Like, you'll you'll want to be pairing the Beerus with the Whis, with the Goku and the Vegeta in one hand, and Vegito Blue and stuff like that. And then on the other hand, you might see a team with the Rose, the Fuse Zamasu, the Corrupted Fuse Zamasu, EX Zamasu, stuff like that. So I do think that, you know, while there will be a combined version of the team, I do believe that there will be distinct good guy and bad guy versions of that team as options later in the game, you guys. And while we're talking about God Key, we see next up here EX Whis. Probably still one of, if not the best, EX units in the game. I wonder if EX Nail is on this list. EX Nail. Are you on here? Yeah, he is. Okay. Well, EX Wii still one of the best EX units in the game. And he's a leader for your God Key teams. It's one of the only situations where a leader for a team is an EX unit. Nail kind of shares a similar property to that. But Nail's a little bit more support than he is a leader but Whis gives out the damage passives to all the other God Key units, especially Beerus, but all of them are functional. He has the team heal, very powerful green card, and he spams out green cards to the rest of your teammates as well. Just extremely effective EX unit, very, very good leader for your God Key teams. Fusion 13 is next, very effective damage dealing unit, who also has a very good cover change mechanic and a good ultimate arts technique. He's statted very well for both offense and defense. So very, very relevant C ability. Very, very relevant team with the androids, but not a top, top tier team. I don't think that the androids are on quite the same level as like Son Family Fusions and LOE. I think they're kind of like the next step down, but they are still an extremely good and relevant team. He can also function on movies or fusions teams but he, he really has his best spot, I do believe, on the Androids teams. Next up here we have the Super 17, a unit that does lack, he lacks a little bit of offensive power until he starts last hitting other enemies and killing them, in which case he gets a permanent damage buff, but he does make up for it with extremely good defenses, a very, very good green card that, that provides lots of buffs and debuffs for not only you, but the enemy also. And then as well, good cover change mechanic if you can make good use of it. Combining him with 13, or even on a fusions team with like Vegito, you'll have a cover for not only red cards, but then yellow cards as well. So that gives you that good dual option for cover changing mechanics there. Very, very good unit. His ultimate arts technique is one of the most annoying to deal with in the game because it's got that full team paralyze, which is super effective unless you have units that nullify those types of status debuffs. But outside of that, his main drawback again is his little bit lack of damage, but he does make up for that with some of his late game buffs, as well as his tanking and defensive options also, and his ultimate arts card. So very, very good unit, definitely high tier. Just, I wish he did a little bit more damage. You kind of just start killing people with him before he gets his damage where it needs to be. Red Vegito next. Features the 10 second lock-in, features free seven stars worth of stats that made him immediately relevant as soon as he got that seventh star. The lock-in is really what does it for him, you guys. Like He's also one of the only units that really gives hit problems. Like Normally hit can just delete most units in the game regardless of their color. Vegito is one of the color advantage and tanky enough units where he can really give hit Kind of a problem with that so that's good as well and then he can heal and lock hit in and then cause all types of problems there also so very very good unit for the fusions teams but not because of his damage output you guys just mostly because of his defense because he can do really long combos and because of the lock in the blue card also deletes some enemy cards which is quite useful also but the heal and the lock in are the best tools the heal the lock in the z ability for fusions and his defense are the best tools that he really has that gives him his value here, you guys. Next up, Perfect Cell. He's been in the game for a while. We don't really need to cover him too much, but just very, very good offensive kit. Extremely good green card. 
really nice ultimate arts technique and that one time instant transmission cover save just give him really good presence on regeneration teams also androids teams really benefit from him as well future teams not quite there they're a little bit of an underdog team so understandably um, you might not want to run a whole lot of the future squad but maybe they'll get back to where they need to be once we see some Vegito Blue, some Rosé, some Fusamasu and stuff like that but until then just he fits on a good amount of teams regardless does really good damage good value again we've seen this sell in high tier for quite a while now so no, no reason to expect that to change too much next up the Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan Blue Kaoken Goku this unit some people may disagree with, some might not, but he's an extremely good damage dealing unit. Very similar to the Golden Frieza. He's got an effective burst damage window where he's most effective and outside of that he's not really the best unit. But during that period of time where he is hyper effective, he's going to be dealing a lot of damage. He can take hits pretty well. He can restore his key with a good green card. He can delete your entire enemy's hand with his blue card when you use that properly. And that's a repeatable blue card effect that he can do more than once. So again, very, very hyper useful burst damage dealing unit. You just need to kind of use him properly and um, not, not uh, sleep on him or let his transformation expire before you're able to get out some really good damage. Again. I quite like this unit, but the God Key team is where he mostly finds his relevance. And, I don't know, again, that team still needs a little bit of love before it's like top competitive team. But I do think this unit will be relevant for quite a while just because of his really good damage dealing. Next up, the Spirit Bomb Absorbed Green Movies Goku has relevance on Son Family, on movies, on Saiyans teams. He is a terrible damage dealing unit early on in the game but it doesn't stay that way forever as his momentum starts to build and in late game he's actually a reasonably good damage dealing unit but his defenses are top notch he's got a very repeatable cover change that's basically what you want to do with him is early game just let him kind of soak up some damage and instead of your other characters catching a beating and then towards the end of the fight, you can heal and then whip out one of the highest damage ultimate arts techniques in the entire game. Easily capable of doing some rising rush levels of damage. And even on color disadvantage, it generally does like almost half a million damage in most cases. But he does not function very well against purple units, you guys. There's another unit where he's green. Unfortunately, there's a lot of powerful purple units in the game. So that does give him some problems. But against neutral and advantage characters, his ultimate technique, once you know all of the buffs have been considered, can do upwards of like 800 to like 1.2 or 3 million damage sometimes. So again, he's a very good character. You just kind of have to use him to, to absorb damage and then later in the fight is when he can start dealing his own damage. So again, if you use him properly, very, very good unit, but um, I definitely think he deserves high tier placement as well. Next up, Kid Boo here. Didn't quite bring the regeneration team all the way back, but he's definitely super relevant, you guys. The biggest problem with Kid Boo is that his key regeneration is really bad. Like, it's hard for him to keep momentum and combos going because he just sucks so much at regenerating key. However, his damage output is really nice. His heals while he's doing damage is quite nice. His defense is okay, even though he's got a built-in 20% damage buff, like damage, you know, reduction buff, he still can take beatings pretty easily. So even, even Hit can take out Kid Buu without too many problems. So he's not the best in terms of defenses, but um, you can still kind of work around that, do some offensive damage, do a good ultimate arts technique. He's got a really good super move that hurts the entire enemy team. It's just you do have to be wary about his lack of key regeneration. That's the biggest drawback with Kid Boo right there. But otherwise, exceptional damage dealing unit. A little bit of a narrow focus on his kid as well, but still, no, no real problems with that unit other than key restore. Kakunsa next. She's your early game melee and blue card damage dealing unit for your females slash universe 2 squad. 
She synergizes extremely well with that team. Again, you have the early game melee damage dealing unit, the Rosie for your late game blast damage dealing, and then your in-between, which is your defense and damage dealing and lock-in, Rebrienne, just, it makes for a really, really powerful, very high synergy team, you guys. And again, her blue card damage is extremely good. So even though the female's team might not be one of the best, best teams in the game, they're still completely competitive, and she's got a very, very good spot on that team. Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta, even more valuable these days because you'll be squaring up against lots of powerful green units, be it a new LF Goku, Buhan, the Fusion Super 13, or sorry, Fusion Super 17, the movies Goku. So that's kind of added some value back to Vegeta as he kind of started to drop off a little bit because God Key is not the very best. But his exploitable two-time lock-in, like if you are dealing with a green character, you lock them in, in many cases Vegito can just come in and get a guaranteed kill just because of that. So playing him properly as a short little burst window damage character, you, he can get a lot of effective results with him. His ultimate arts technique is also quite nice and he's got a better green card that does nearly the same thing as this green Goku up here. Like green Goku has better effects on his green card but you can combo out of Vegeta's green card with like red cards, yellow cards, blue cards. You can combo out of it with whatever. Whereas Goku does not have that many options coming out of his. So more liberal in terms of how you can exploit his green card, but better effects on this Goku's green card up here. So again, Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta, you gotta kind of use him very specifically. It kind of like hit as an assassin character but he is extremely good at what he does, kind of like Wolverine. Next up here we have the Future Trunks, a very, very powerful unit that really only drawback with him is that he's another one of those kind of like burst damage dealing characters that has his window of usefulness, and then when his transformation expires, well, he actually gets a buff when his transformation expires, but it's, you know, it's, it doesn't make up for his loss of stats detransforming, but he's one of the better transforming units, at least of the ones that lose their transformation anyway. So, again, just very well statted, good damage dealing unit. Probably the biggest thing hurting him is that the Vegeta family team is not quite where it needs to be at right now, and neither is the future team. So he might struggle a little bit more with team placement compared to some other powerful characters that he can, you know, hang right with. But... He's still really, really good, you guys. Definitely deserves S plus status. Very high damage on his blue card as well. EX Snail coming out, being one of your best options for purple on regeneration. He is a little bit more reliable of an option than Evil Boo or than your Janemba, because Janemba is pretty much all defense, no offense, and the Buhan, I mean, sorry, the Super Boo is pretty much all offense no defense and this guy is kind of like he rides the middle a little bit better he's got good offense with good damage buffs like every time he uses a card or has a card like used against him or something like that and as well good blue card damage a great main ability good death passives for regeneration team just all in all a very 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 useful ex card one of the best in the entire game, actually. Him and Whis are probably the two best DX units in the entire game. And again, Regeneration's best purple unit. Next up, Purple 17. Extremely relevant on Android's teams. Very, very high defenses, and he got a lot better after his rework. Whether he still deserves S+, plus or S, though, is debatable. Android's team is still extremely good. He's definitely the best purple Android in the game as well, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can agree with that. He's definitely still extremely valuable. Rosie, we kind of already went over. She's just a very integral part of that U2 ladies squad and has the complementing late game blast damage to Kakunsa's early game strike damage. So she deserves a spot. I can agree with that. Next up, final form, Blue Cooler. I think he probably might deserve to kick up to S+, plus, like the bottom of S+, plus because of his relevant synergy with the newly redeveloped LOE squads. 
He's a leader for your LOE teams, provides great buffs in conjunction with the great buffs that this cooler throws out. So they honestly pair extremely well together, you guys. But again, this cooler fits as a leader on any lineage of evil-based teams for his Super Saiyan Bardock-esque swap passives that he gives out. Next up, the Red 18. I've honestly never pulled this unit, never gotten a user. I don't know too, too much about her because of that, but she's good on your androids teams as well as your ladies teams. So she's got a little bit of dual team functionality there. Again, I don't, I can't speak too much onto why she's so good because I didn't, I, I don't know, I wasn't really interested in her banner and I can't really, um, can't really run her if I don't have her, but uh, she is good. She does a lot of damage. I know when I've had to fight against her, she's hurt me quite a bit, but I haven't really seen too much of her, like too many people using her, and I haven't gotten to use her myself. So honestly, I'll just have to agree with Rismir on this one just out of my own lack of knowledge. <laughs> Next up, we have the yellow Kamikolo. He's probably the best Legends Road character in the game. It's between him and probably the Yardrat Red Goku, but Yardrat Red Goku is placed way down here. I don't know, it's just the only real problem with him is that the yellow perfect cell is better for regeneration. However, he provides really good buffs and passives and other synergies with regeneration team. It's totally an option to run, especially if you don't have cell, maybe. But uh, the Legends Road team by itself is booty. But uh, on regeneration, this Kamikolo is actually not that bad. Probably not as good as what Nail provides to the team as an opposite, like, Namek, you know, but, um, and the fact, again, that he's yellow and he contests really heavily with Cell because of that. If he was any other color, I would say he'd probably be core on Regen, but because he's yellow and that's an issue, uh, that's probably why he's a little bit less valuable, you guys. Pod Frieza, next. Great on Lineage of Evil, but you do not need him for your, I mean, sorry, Great on Frieza Force. Let me do that again. But you do not need him for Lineage of Evil anymore now that Lineage of Evil has new options. I used to bench him on Lineage of Evil just for his synergies with the other Friezas, but now that my Lineage of Evil team is more cooler almost than it is Frieza, I have recently taken him off. But post his rework, his damage is great, on his yellow cards anyway. His blue card damage is phenomenal. He's got blast armor, and uh, he's all around pretty good character. But, again, more so now just for Frieza Force and not so much Lineage of Evil. The GT Super Saiyan Goku does tremendous blast damage, but has a relatively narrow kit. It's kind of just focused around blast damage. He fits well on Saiyans and Super Saiyan teams. He fits really well on GT teams, now that that's kind of a thing, even though that team's not super relevant. And, uh, yeah, just mainly Saiyans or Super Saiyans or Son family, I guess. But the Spirit Bomb Absorb Goku and the LF Super Saiyan 3 Goku are probably both better options for Son family. Yeah, I would say mostly just like Saiyans, Super Saiyans, and GT is where you'd want to throw this Goku here. Next up, the base form 13. Great blast damage output, great blue card output, reasonably good green card that temporarily will lock up your enemy's hand so they have less options and potentially, hopefully, you lock up like an ultimate arts technique or a Dragon Ball card. But um, just great synergy on androids. Not so much movies, better on androids. But uh, again, just good damage dealing character kind of linear focus on his kit as I think about it, but, you know, it is what it is. He's good at what he does. Next up, the Ginyu Goku. Again, very similar to the Red Vegito. Free seven stars worth of stats. Good on the Frieza Force team, or Ginyu Force teams, but that's pretty much it. You don't want to use him on any, like, Saiyans or Goku or Son family-based teams. He's just really for your Frieza Force and Ginyu squads. He's got a good set of buffs when you use the green card to remove all of his debuffs. He's able to steal some Dragon Balls. He can do some cool little quirky things and his damage output's pretty good too. It's a powerful team that he's on, but I'm not sure he's better than this Frieza here, really. I don't know. I know that Rusmir 
didn't really like the Frieza. He was underwhelmed by him at first. Personally, I think this Frieza deserves a higher ranking, maybe up towards the where this Android 18 is, or maybe even at the bottom of S+. I mean, the Frieza at six stars has 160,000 strike attack once he's transformed. But again, very similar to the blue Kaoken Goku here, very similar to the Trunks, very similar to the green Golden Frieza as well, honestly, just a little bit different visually and mechanically. He's a timed burst damage dealing unit. He's got an effective window where he is extremely good, and then after that, he is not so good. He also has the worst detransforming debuff out of any character in the game. Like, when he detransforms, he loses 100 key. So no matter how much key you have, you're going to be at zero when he detransforms. When Trunks detransforms, he gets a, like a damage buff. So there's a big difference there in terms of that. But I don't know. I really like this Frieza. I haven't pulled him. I haven't gotten a chance to use him. But I do think he's probably a little bit better than Rusmir gives him credit for. Just for his burst damage dealing capabilities. His spammable heals. And uh, yeah, it's just a good time wasting. It's hard to kill, obnoxious to deal with character. We skipped over this EX Zanya. She's great for your movies team, uh, Bojack Squad, but has really no placement outside of that whatsoever. When she dies, she locks in your enemy for a little bit, which is an interesting way to get a lock-in mechanic. Her defenses are really not that great, but her offenses are not bad at all. And again, she synergizes real well with movies team, so I can understand her placement there. We already went over Frieza. Again, I think Frieza could be a little bit higher. This green Gohan right here just doesn't fit into Son family very well because you do have better Son family options, but he is totally usable on Son family. Future team, again, is kind of lacking a little bit. That's why he's probably not a little bit more valuable than where he is. And I don't know, you guys. I didn't pull this Gohan, so I never got a chance to use him. I know his green card is amazing for tossing people out and keeping them like locked out of the battle for like 15 seconds, which is kind of absurd. But at the same, it's like a reverse lockout. You just use it a little differently. But yeah, he doesn't have an ultimate arts technique. I don't know, he's really good offensive character. Like I sound like I'm clowning on him here, but he's in S tier. He's very, very good. It's just his teams aren't the best. His options for placement on teams isn't the best. But you can use him on Trinity. He'll transform into a Super Saiyan, so there is that. Next up, the we're like 40 minutes into this video, you guys, so it's been a while. But next up, we have the Red Metal Cooler. I believe his value has come up recently because of the new additions to Lineage of Evil. He's still completely viable on your Lineage of Evil teams. He's got good defenses. He's got a good heal. He's got a great green card that's comboable and destroys your enemy's entire hand worth of cards. He's got a pretty good blue card also. His damage output is actually not even that bad either, especially if you combine him with the blue final form cooler and the purple cooler, run like the triple cooler squad. He can do really good work and he's completely viable as a replacement on your lineage of evil teams if you do not have this new red Frieza. That's who I run because I have the new cooler, but I don't have Frieza, so I like him. Next up, EX Broly made the list. EX Broly fits best my understanding on yellow yellow blue with hit and like lf goku or you know some other oppressively powerful blue character i don't have him though so i was never able to use him i know that he's got good lock-in mechanic i know that he does lots and lots of damage but i was never unfortunately able to pull him and use him myself but i do know that he does most likely deserve the spot that rusmir's gave him here Go Tanks is next as a tanking and ultimate arts option for your fusions teams, just an alternate. I don't think that Go Tanks is core. I still think the core would be Vegito, Vegito, Gogeta, and potentially this Super 17 right here. And then you have this as an option, mainly for dealing with purple units too. You can definitely bring him for the anti-purple, but his damage output is not quite the best. He's much more of a defender and kind of like a use the green card to stun him, use the ultimate arts card to faint him, and then set him up for some other ridiculous combo or rising rush situation from that point on. But again, he's not bad at all. He's not, not bad. The S tier characters, none of them are bad. 
Next up, the blue Son Family Gohan. On Son Family, he's outclassed by the LF Goku, but he is still completely usable. He's more of a tanking unit that can do a reasonably good damage. He's got a decent ultimate arts technique as well, but he's much more of like a defending unit for the Son Family. And there's nothing wrong with that, but again, I just think he's been outclassed by <clears throat> a cheat tier Goku up here. Next up, the Ginyu Force. It says EX Ginyu right here, but this is basically all of the EX Ginyu members. Undoubtedly, some are better than others, like Birder is better than Jis, and Ginyu is better than Goldo, but Goldo is still not bad either. Jis is kind of eh, but just that whole team generally runs together. So I would stack pretty much all of them as a team kind of in this one spot right here. Of course, they combine very well with certain Frieza's and the Ginyu Goku as well, but the rest of them kind of like line up right here. And that makes sense to me. They're an extremely effective team and for a completely free to play squad being that good and all EX units, there's really nothing wrong with that at all. Next up here, we have the Son Family Ultimate Gohan and my much older characters that are still fairly relevant. Gohan kind of needs to benefit from using a couple of green cards first to get him to where he needs to be, but he's got the instant transmission save. He's a great bench unit for your Son family or hybrids teams. And if you do not have more powerful options like LF Goku or the movies Goku right here, he is a viable fill in as an active unit for that situation, you guys. So still usable, just a little bit dated at this point. My pretty much the same situation for females and for future based teams. More so for females because future again is not really where it needs to be at the moment. But she is a low damage, high support, very useful unit for her passives and the things that she provides for the team other than just raw damage. And then you guys, they're not on here. But arguably right in this area here is where the new EX second form Frieza and the Shishami would go. And the reason I say that is because they're both really good EX units with really good kits. However, there are better options for both of them on those respective teams. Like you have the yellow EX Frieza. There's no reason why you would want to run him instead of the full power final form Frieza. Like, literally none. Like, he would be a bench unit, but never a core unit on Frieza Force over this Frieza right here. The green Shishami, I believe, would be a little bit more useful of a character because there aren't as many powerful green units for Frieza Force, but still probably not a good reason to run him over Gold Frieza. You know, Gold Frieza is still an extremely useful unit, and while the strike damage is going to be good coming from Shishami, I, I still think that um, he's not competitive enough to dethrone some of your better active choices for those teams. So I would put them either at like the top of A or the bottom of S right here, even though they are not on this list right now. Maybe like right here after this Gohan. Anyway, we're like an hour into this video, you guys. We've covered all the most relevant and the new characters, so I'm just gonna kind of breeze through most of the rest of this. And like a lot of his characters you already know. And so again, we're gonna try and get through this a little bit quicker here, you guys, just in the interest of time. We have Slug, very linear kit, strike damage, great on regen, great bench for regen, but just, um, you know, just very, very linear kit. But he's good at what he does. His defenses are also pretty good. But it's just um, possibly your main regeneration squad would consist of Kid Buu, Cell, and Buhan. So he would just kind of be a flex option for regeneration. Next up, this Son Family slash GT Goku is actually a very high damage dealing unit. Also a linear kit based around just kind of doing strike damage and using cards until you can use his ultimate arts. And similarly to Slug, He's kind of just a flex option on Son Family. The GT team is not fully relevant yet, but it is an option and he wouldn't be a flex there. But on Son Family, you also have the LF Gohan here. So there's not too much reason to use him over LF Gohan. So he's like a secondary flex unit for your Son Family team. But at five stars or higher, he's a great bench for Son Family, that's for sure. 
Next up, the Frieza Saga Krillin and Gohan, or Gohan and Krillin rather. Very useful, free EX units. The Gohan especially is capable of some pretty high damage output, and they're reasonably good EX units, you guys. It's good to see relevant EX units in the game. And then again, right around here is probably where the EX second form Frieza and the new Shishami would go also. EX Beerus. Better for the God Key team than the Green Sparking Beerus. He is a more of an effective option, and he, other than the fact, is probably less competitive than the Super Saiyan Blue KO Ken Goku. That's again, he's like a, a secondary flex option for your God Key team. But he is better than the other Beerus, so there is that. Next up, the Super Saiyan God Red Go, uh, Vegeta here from the movies. Extremely linear kit, not the best strike damage, not the best blue card damage, but he does have a really functional cover swap, so there is that. It's, there's better units for every team he would be on. On movies, you'd have better options. On God Key, you have better options, so he just kind of struggles to be relevant. Even on Vegeta Family, like he's a good yellow for Vegeta Family but his Z ability doesn't fit in there very well. So honestly, the yellow GT Vegeta is probably a better choice. Where is yellow GT Vegeta? Uh, yellow GT Vegeta and B, I would probably move yellow GT Vegeta up here to high A. Honestly, I'd swap. I would probably swap the GT Vegeta with the Super Saiyan God Vegeta. That's my opinion on the matter right there. I would swap them most likely because the GT Vegeta is honestly better. He's got a better Z ability that affects Saiyans in general better and he's got more team diversity. Next up, the 13 here, or no, 14, sorry. Um, green, so he does compete for a core spot with the Super 17, but he arguably does more damage. He's better damage dealer than Super 17, but Super 17 has more kit, more utility, more defense, and less of a linear kit. Like, he's really just strike damage, strike damage, strike damage, into main ability, into more strike damage, into super move. So, very linear kit, and has competition on his own team for placement. But great Z ability if you get him highly starred enough. Again, great Z. All the androids have great Z abilities for the androids team, for the most part. Next up, Bardock. Don't really need to waste any time on him. He's the leader for your Trinity teams. Provides the great Super Saiyan 1 buff swap passives, and... Kind of does need to be six stars to be competitive stat-wise. Like, damage output's not really quite there. Defenses really aren't quite there. But he's got a good green card. Like, again, he's just your leader for the Trinity teams. That team has stayed relevant for quite a while. And that's why he's here. New Nappa next. Synergizes very well with Vegeta's and Kid's. But by himself as a single unit, he's probably not that impressive or overwhelming. Requires a good team setup, but he's a completely viable team. Team can do damage, can do good work. And uh, remember, any units that are in A here, they're, they're not really bad either. It's just usually they have highly competitive alternative options that are potentially better. But again, there's still nothing wrong with these units. Just linear kits in many cases. But again, he's a good supporting character for kids. Vegeta's or both, but um, that's kind of how that plays out. Khalifa next. Females team is optimal with the U2 females. Kakunsa is way better than Khalifa, and that's why Khalifa's value is dropped. Just because, again, competition for her own spot on her own team. However, if you wanted to run like a Universe 6 team instead of Universe 2, she has some viability there. It's just, again, females function best with Universe 2 at the moment. But um, Universe 6, I'm sure, will be like a viable meta one day. Next up, Red Saiya Girl. Ugh, I never pulled her, but she's good at dealing damage. She's a viable option on women, especially because she's red and that's not covered by Universe 2. So that gives her some decent viability there. But, um,. Yeah, I don't know, it's just another unit that I never got, so I'm not super familiar with her. I just know that her damage output is quite nice, and she's a good uh, anti-Frieza Force member too, I believe? But uh, I could be wrong about that. 
Kaba next functions with any real Vegetas in the game or on Universe 6. He's a reasonable character, but just doesn't have a team to really shine on. Zamasu losing relevance because, again, same thing as before. Kid Buu is the more competitive option for regeneration now at this point. He doesn't really do enough damage. However, he's a great tank and healer. And future team as well. Still falling behind a little bit. So that's why he's kind of losing some relevance here. Kid Bunny Bulma is just another flex option for your females teams. She's more of a supportive character. Again, there's nothing wrong with her. She's a good unit, but just um, is not as shiny as some of your better options for females. Chilled next. Almost a mandatory bench unit on your LOE teams, but has been completely outclassed on LOE by the new cooler that just came out. There's literally no reason to run chilled over cooler. But again, for the health buffs and the buff to healing effects, he is great on the bench for LOE teams. Next up is Kale. She is, again, suffering from a lot of competition with better red units, better females. Again, Universe 6 is not as relevant as Universe 2 in terms of females teams. But I like her main ability. She just doesn't do a whole, whole lot of damage, but she's, she's an okay unit. She's alright, she's alright. This Frieza. I'm not quite sure why this Frieza is still in A, because he's been as well outclassed on his own teams. Uh, he's a bench for yellow, yellow, blue teams, I guess. There's that. But he's kind of starting to really age out. I honestly think the yellow GT Vegeta is better. I think this yellow Goku is better than this yellow Frieza. I think like all of these first, one, two, three, four, six, seven. At least up until, like, this point right here, all of these characters are still better than this Frieza. Just because, again, he's no spot on his own teams, kind of relegated to a bench role only, and then still his benching is not that great because it's color dependent. I don't know, you guys. Next up, Son Family Goku. Arguably deserves to be an A, but again, for Son Family, he's completely outclassed by this transforming Gohan for sure. Next up here is Goku Black, you guys. It was always kind of an underwhelming unit. I thought that his uh, stacking buff when he gets damaged would be a little bit more relevant than what it is. His defense isn't super great. His heal is useful, but his, again, his defense and his damage is really just not that great. It doesn't really make him stand out as a, as a really awesome or functional unit. And again, also the future team is not really super relevant right now. And he doesn't tag his god key, or any type of Goku or Son family character, so that all hurts him as well there. Next up, Piccolo. Great character, just dated, old, he's aged out of the meta here. He's uh, honestly one of the best healers and one of the better tanks in the game, but you just have uh, Buhan as an astronomically better option for green on regen. There's no reason to run Piccolo over Buhan, so that's why Piccolo has kind of fallen off down here. We already covered this Vegeta a little bit. I think he should be valued higher. He's a great generic bench for Saiyans teams. He's debuffs and the abilities that he has, like the tools of his kit for debuffing the enemy are quite nice in combat. And his, his damage is okay and his defense is okay. There's nothing really wrong with him. And he's got reasonable team diversity on Vegeta family, Saiyans, GT. So I honestly think he should be a little bit high. Super Saiyan also, he fits on that team. I think he should be an A tier, honestly, myself. Krillin, next. Uh, yeah, it's Krillin. He got a buff, which made him a little bit better, but it's still Krillin. He has no teams, he has no relevance anywhere, and he doesn't really stand out or do anything that makes him shine. Broly, this low? Yeah, I guess so. With Bojack coming out, Broly has been completely outclassed on his own movies team. As well, Vegito is better on Super Saiyan 1 teams, so there's just really no good spot for Super Saiyan Broly where he's competitive right now. Like, he's still usable, but he's more just a bench unit for your movies teams, you guys. Again, like Bojack completely outclasses him, and Vegito completely outclasses him, so there's, there's just not really a good spot for poor Broly, man. That's a sad thing, too. That's very sad. Once the character that was the single best unit in the game has now fallen quite a ways behind. So much so that he's right above this purple Vegeta right here. 
who is a blast damage monster. After his buff, he's actually gotten considerably better. But again, you guys, there's just still so many better options for better teams that are just more relevant than this Vegeta. But on Frieza Force, as a purple unit, he's not terrible. He just uh, doesn't have any Vegeta family synergy, really. So that's, that's a little unfortunate. Next up, Yardrat Goku. I honestly agree with Rusmir in the sense that none of the Legends Road units are really that good. I mean, the Piccolo or Kamikolo is probably the best one. Other than that, none of them have really been that outstanding. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's something that I can agree with Rusmir on. Next up, the purple Android 15. Don't really need him on the Android's team. The purple 17 is significantly better, but he is functional. Definitely much more of a support unit. It's just uh, the same thing we've mentioned so many times now, you guys. There's just too much competition on the same team for that unit. Ugh, I'm just going to fly through the rest of these real fast, you guys. Say a man at Legends Road unit. Just Legends Road units are eh. He, like, has some Gohan synergy that he gets to have access to, but not all of it, which is kind of wonky. Super Saiyan 3 Goku. The triple Super Saiyan 3 team is very bad. Goku is very dated. He's usable, he does good damage, his defensive stats are awful unless you have him at 6 stars or higher. He's a great bench for your Saiyan teams, but just not a lot of value in him anymore. Fury Broly could arguably be higher now that the movies team is so much better than what it was before BoJack. And you don't really have too much of a better red movies unit. I guess not one that fits the team anyway. I think you could use the Fusion 13, but I don't know. I think this Broly probably belongs in A, maybe the tail end of A, or at least the top of B. But again, free seven stars units are not bad. He's got a decent kit too. Beerus, eh, kind of sucks. He was the first Legends Limited unit. His stats are not great, even with his Diamond Equip or Platinum Equip or whatever. He's still really not that great. The EX Beerus is better. This yellow future Gohan is a useful character for certain challenges and other situations where you need him to die to buff the damage of your other characters. But uh, Future is not a super relevant team right now, and he's just kind of aging and showing his age. Kaoken Goku, showing his age, doesn't fit into very many teams very well. Son Family has better blue options, but he is a good bench for Son Family. This green Vegeta doesn't have a good Z ability and is just aged to the point where he's not very useful. Yellow Bojack does not do good damage um, really at all. Even with the Bojack team set up, I still don't usually use him. So there's that. He's a good bench for the team, but uh, yeah, he's just not very good. <laughs> Bojack, the original Bojack. The purple one is amazing. The yellow one's not super great. This green Broly deserves a higher spot. He deserves a much higher spot. I would put this green Broly in high A or low S even. He's great on the movies team. His cover is great. His blue card nuking damage is great. His green card is great. I like this Broly. I think this Broly is good. However, same as before. You have competition for a movie's unit because of this green Goku. Maybe a couple other units he would compete with for the spot. But I honestly think this green Broly should be higher on the tier list, you guys. Super Boo is a glass cannon. And now at this point, even, he doesn't do very much damage. EX Nail is the better option for your regeneration teams. But if you're trying to do something like all Boo units, he's usable. He's functional. It's just, uh, unfortunately, he dies really quickly. This God Q doesn't do any type of reasonable damage. He's a great bench for your God Key, but that's really all you do with him. You do not bring him as the red unit on God Key. Whis is a million times better. There's no, 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 no reason to use this Goku instead of Whis. There's none. This Trunks, underwhelming. Future team's not a thing right now. Vegeta family has a better trunks as well as a better blue unit, so that's why he doesn't have much value. Rildo could arguably also be an A tier on this list, but doesn't really have a good team to be on. Like, he could be on GT, but the red base form kid Goku would be better. 
He still kills Endurance, he still does lots of damage, he's still a pretty beefy unit, so again, I think he should be an A somewhere, but not above this uh, red GT Goku here. Next up, yellow Super Saiyan 2 Angel Goku. Doesn't do very good damage, but has reasonable defenses and a reasonable heal, a crisis little heal that he's got. But again, his Z ability's trash, which makes him hard to fit on any specific team. Uh, other than yellow color themed teams, but outside of that, he doesn't really have a good spot. This red Vegeta, as well, probably should be like in A somewhere, but um, ever since his rework, he's actually quite good. He does good damage, he's got a good repeatable heal, he fits on Vegeta family quite nicely. Yeah, I think he deserves maybe an A tier spot also. Gogeta is a bench unit on fusions, and that's all he is. He's not functional over Red Vegito. There's no situation where you would want to use him unless you don't have Red Vegito. If you don't have Red Vegito, what are you doing running a fusions team? Why didn't you get Red Vegito? If you're a newer player and you have Vegito and not the Red Vegito, like if you have the purple one and not the red one, I, don't, I still don't know what's going on. You should have that Red Vegito. And Gogeta, bleh. This Ginyu is a bench, I guess, for Ginyu Force or Frieza Force teams, but the EX Ginyu is better. Even the EX Green Goldo is probably better. He just doesn't do any damage. He's more defense. Android 16 has dropped back down to a spot where I'm sure most of you guys are happy compared to the last time you saw him on one of my tier lists. When I released the last tier list, we did not have this Super 13. We didn't have really any good green options for androids. He was an option, guys. That's all he was, a defensive, cover-changing, blow-himself-up option, and that's why he was rated higher. He's still good for defense. That's about it, though. He's not going to do any type of comparable damage to anyone. His explosion is good enough, but there's not too many situations where you want to willfully put yourself at a disadvantage and sacrifice one of your characters like that. Except maybe when it's a finishing blow and wins you the fight. But outside of that, I don't know, you guys. He's, he's, he's again, all that he brings to the table is defense. Last time I had Android 16 tier a lot higher, there were not better options, like way, way better options for androids. So now that there are, there's really no reason to use him, and his Z ability is not very good for androids either. But again, he's a good defense, good tank, good blow himself up unit, and that's really all he brings to the table. All right, so now we're coming down here to the C tier. You guys should be pretty familiar with most of these characters, but at this point, there's just a high degree of competitiveness with other characters for those same teams. And that's why in a lot of cases they don't fit onto any specific team anymore. They're not usable even on their own team. Like Pycon's bench for movies. He's functional in events, but you have better options. Janemba, you have better options with Nail for regeneration. He's more of a bench unit. He does like no damage. IT Goku does no damage. You have better options. This Vegeta is still a mandatory bench on any team with Super Saiyan 1 units, but he's dated and doesn't do like any damage. Chi Chi, completely replaced by plenty of other female units that are much better. You got Bunny Bulma and both Mai. She's good for Son family matchups, but even then, dated. Videl replaced by Rosie. Pan is a bench on Son family, but not competitive with LF Goku or any other unit above her in this tier list really yellow goku black doesn't do anything competitive turles is non-competitive with purple bojack android 18 is non-competitive with rebrian kamikolo is non-competitive with lord slug this super saiyan 3 goku just kind of sucks in general bardock completely dated and aged out red cell the same story completely dated and aged out green cooler would be bench for movies or like loe teams i guess only because most coolers are also movies units but completely replaced on his own teams majin vegeta can actually do good strike damage and synergize well on saiyan teams but he has like the worst debuff for your own teammates in the entire game 
which has always hurt his value. This Goku does no damage. This Trunks will die like super easy and does no damage. Go Tanks is a bench on fusions. Go Ten is a bench on hybrids. None of them have any type of health, sustain, or damage dealing capabilities. Legends Road Go Tanks is non-competitive really. Purple, one hand spirit bomb, Goku, bad Z ability, nowhere to put him, non-competitive with Bojack. F tier. Yeah, I agree, I agree, I agree. I agree with F tier all the way across. None of these units are really useful. However, I think there's a conditional on Mr. Satan that if you're team building him with the cheat tier Goku here, then he has got value for providing those blue cards making them cheaper to use. In that trolley team setup, Mr. Satan is probably much, much higher on the tier list. But outside of a special quirky build like that, that's it, you guys. We went through pretty much every single character in the game. At least we left out some EX characters, undoubtedly, but we've been through every single sparking character in the game at this point. This video took probably well over an hour to go through, and that's not even including any team talk. I don't know how much longer this is going to be an option, you guys. Tier lists like this. It's going to get to the point where there's so many characters in the game and so many competitive different options and things that tier lists are going to get to the point where they're not feasible or, like, logistically accurate or... I don't know exactly how to phrase it, you guys, but it's like what I was mentioning earlier. Like, you have one of the best characters in the game right here, Purple Vegito. This purple Vegito can get dogged, like absolutely dogged by this GT Vegeta down here. Who's like four tiers down on this list, like 50, 60 characters down the list in viability. But because he's a competent yellow unit that can debuff and deal really good damage, he can dog the heck out of one of the best characters in the game, you guys. And that makes these tier lists like hard to deal with sometimes. Like, yes. These characters on this top row up here all just have stacked kits that make them generally better than most of these units down here, but it's still like just the 3v3 nature of this game, the color competition, it just, it makes all this really weird, you guys. It makes it really weird. Like at face value, we have these characters ranked, but when one character down here can dog a character that's all the way up here, I don't know, I'm going to stop rambling about it, you guys, right now. But eventually it's going to get to a point where there's too many characters in this game to feasibly make a tier list like this. It's just not going to be accurate, really. I mean, if that makes any sense to you guys. I don't know. This video has been long enough. I've talked my head off. Hopefully some of you guys have even watched all this material, found it useful or entertaining. Maybe. I uh, do appreciate each and every one of you who happened to make it this far. Even if you didn't make it this far, you watched the video, I still appreciate you. Feel free to leave all your opinions down below in the comments. Um, you know, I'm sure people are going to agree and disagree with plenty of different things on this list. And most of that is because of the weirdness of competitiveness between these different characters, their colors, the 3v3, the weaknesses, the strengths, the matchups. All of that has to be taken into consideration, you guys, which again just makes this all kind of awkward. Either way, I have that tier list retweeted on my Twitter. I've shared it in the Facebook group as well. So if you actually need the image itself, those would be the two best places to look for it. And that's about it for this video, you guys. Again, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a thumbs up on it. Help spread it out so someone might end up seeing it. I know my algorithm's not in the best shape right now on YouTube, but uh, I'm going to keep doing what I do. And uh, yeah, leave a comment down below if you have any questions or disagreements or agreements. And if you're new around here, consider subscribing so I can see you guys again on the next video. My brain's fried. I've been talking for too long, you guys. I'm out of here. It's going to be a pain in the butt to edit this. But I will see you again very soon, you guys. Have a great weekend, and peace out.